String manipulation methods are a crucial element of development when it comes to JavaScript. As a developer and as someone who's looking forward to doing technical interviews in the future, it is an imperative skill to possess. Hello everybody, welcome to Coding 101, where we are dedicated to making you a better developer one video at a time. In today's video, we are going to cover 10 of the most important string manipulation methods that you must know. This tutorial will be accompanied by examples for better understanding. As always, before we continue with the video, I would like to encourage you once again to subscribe to this channel, make sure that you like this video, and if you have any questions or any comments, make sure that you leave them in the comment section. Now let's continue with our video. But before we continue with our video, I would like for us to get a better understanding of what strings are. Now strings, a string is a sequence of one or more characters that may consist of letters, numbers, or even symbols. Strings in JavaScript are primitive data types and are immutable, which means that they are unchanging. Now, as strings are the way we display and work with the text, and text is our main way of communicating and understanding through computers, strings are one of the most fundamental concepts of programming to be familiar with. And so it is very important that we learn how to work with strings, how to create strings, how to output strings, how to concatenate them, how to concatenate them, and how to learn a variety of methods uh, that can work with all these strings. So the first uh, command that we're going to learn today is string.length. So we're going to create a simple string here and we're going to call it name. And we're going to call this coding 101. So there's our string. So this simple command simply returns the length of the string. Uh, this can be a common on the front uh, front end for doing data validation on text field input, limiting the length of certain data objects, and much, much more. So we're simply going to say name.length. So if we console log that, but you can also see I'm using runjs, so it is uh, showing our output in real time. So you can see that uh, 9 is being returned when we say name.length. So this is just a simple command that returns the length of a string. And then the next function that we're going to learn about uh, treats the, the string as an array of characters. It's called char at or character at. So what character at simply does, let me just put it over here, char at. So it treats uh, a string as an array of characters and it simply retrieves the character at the index that you have provided. So in this example that we have over here, we're just simply going to say uh, name dot car at two. And as you can see, it's going to return D because D is at the index that has been provided. So it's a very simple method method that simply returns the index, the character at the index that you have provided. Let's try a different index. So we can just say name.car at, and if we put zero, it should give us k. Let's try and provide a character that is not inside, I mean an index that is not within the range of that string. Maybe let's say 10. You can see it's going to give you an empty um, a character or an empty string because there is no character at the index of 10. So it is very helpful when you need to check a string for consistency. Uh, you can check, uh, try to see, maybe you want certain strings that have uh, uh, a certain character at its uh, end. Uh, so just like an, an array, you have to keep in mind that the first index in the string is zero and not one. Uh, this can throw you a couple of times if you don't know. You must know that uh, your index starts at 0 and it doesn't start at 1. So the next method that we're going to learn is concat. So concat is a method that is just uh, simply concatenates two strings. So by concatenate, it means you join two strings. So if, uh, if you have two strings and you want to join them together, concat is a very uh, good method that you can use to combine those strings. So let's try, let's create another string. So maybe, uh, you know what, at the very top, I'm just going to put coding. I'm going to 
uh, name is going to be coding. And over here, we're just going to say name two is going to be 101. So we just simply want to uh, concatenate the name that we have declared at the top with name two. So we would use concat in order to do that. So we can just say name dot concat and then put name two over here. And you will see as illustrated over here that uh, these two strings will be concatenated as such. It is a very handy uh, method, uh, even though you might not use it much because you can just simply concatenate strings using the plus uh, a symbol as well. So you can just simply say name plus name two, but it can also come off in handy. Um, yeah, so the, the plus sign and the concat um, uh, method achieve uh, practically the same thing. So yeah, so it's very, very important that you need to learn that as well. And then the next method that we're going to learn is a very important method that allows you to check whether a certain uh, substring is found in a string. So it's called includes. So let's say maybe our string over here, uh, which we're going to name uh, coding in uh, coding uh, 101. We're just going to create a new string, actually. So we're going to just say channel. And we're going to say coding 101. And so what we want to do is that we want to check if 101 is found in that string. So in order to check whether 101 is inside of that string or 101 is a subset of that string, what we would simply do is we would say channel dot includes and then we would put our substring inside and as such it would just simply check I'm just gonna console log this it's just gonna get rid of everything in here All right and then you can see it much more clearly that it's returning uh, true uh, to show that the substring 101 is actually found inside of that include statement. So just like a lot of these method, this is helpful to sort of verify that a string contains a certain wording or a certain substring that is to be expected in a string for validation uh, purposes. So that is a very, very important um, uh, method that you absolutely need to use in your string manipulation. So the next method that we're gonna learn is the split method. So the split method does take in a string and what it simply does, it's going to divide up your, your string or it's going to convert your string into an array. So sometimes you may need to split a string based on a certain character or, or any, or based on a string. This function, it just simply returns an array of substrings. So here is an example. Uh, so we're going to create an example of how this split can be used so we can just say channel dot split and we're just gonna put like an empty uh, string in there and you can see it's gonna divide it uh, according to each individual characters but if we were to divide it according to spaces because there's no space in that string then it's not going to divide it. But if we were to put this a space, white space in our string as such, you would see that it would then divide the string uh, according to where it sees a space. That's where it like sort of demarcates the string. Uh, we can also divide it uh, using one. We can just put a string over here and you could see that it would easily divide up that string uh, according to that pattern. So you can access the strings in the same way that you would access the array after you've done, you're done using a string. So the next method that we're going to learn is substring. So sometimes you have to split a string at a certain uh, index or range of indices. And so for this function, you pass in the index of the element you want to start at as well as the index of the string you want the substring to end at. So it takes in two parameters, unlike the methods that we've learned previously. 
So we want to split up a string. We want to extract a substring uh, from uh, the string that we have declared above. So we just say channel.substring. Remember the first uh, input is where we would like our substring to begin. Uh, so it indicates the index of where we would like our substring to begin. So I'm just going to put one over here. And then where I would like the substring to end, I would like it to end at four. And as you can see, the substring is as such. So it takes in two parameters, as you can see uh, in this example. And uh, essentially, it just like the, the two uh, parameters indicate where the substring should begin and where the substring should end. Now, if we were to take a closer look as to how substring method works, you would notice that in our examples, we've indicated that the substring should start at one. So that's the first thing that we will notice that the substring starts in, at index one. So let me just uh, put this much more clearly. Starts and ends at index four. Those are the two parameters that we have fed into our substring method. And as such, you will notice that our substring will start immediately over here at the index one. And when it reaches four, it does not include four in our substring. It just ends at four, but it does not include four in our substring. So our substring ultimately becomes ODI. So that's the important thing that you have to note when you're working with substring that even though you are giving it the ending, uh, you're signifying to it that the substring should end at a certain number, that uh, number or, or the index that you are giving it, the end index is not going to be included inside of the substring. So that's the most important thing that you have to notice when you're dealing or you're working with substring. And then the next method that we're going to learn is to uppercase, and to lowercase. I'm pretty sure these ones are self-explanatory. Uh, these just simply uh, convert your string to uppercase letters. And yeah, as such, it just simply converts your string to uppercase and to lowercase letters. As such, okay, I believe the C is supposed to be a little bit yeah, like that. You can see that the string that we have has now been converted to uppercase. And if you want to convert it to lowercase, you would just simply do the same. You would just say to lowercase. And it would convert it to lowercase. If the letters were not lowercase, it would do as such. The last method that we're going to learn or that we're going to deal with, let me just clear all these ones because we've already covered them, is the replace method. Uh, so the replace method, what it does, it just simply searches a string for a value or a regular expression. But we're not going to deal with regular expression in today's tutorials. So it would just like search for a string or a substring and uh, it would return a new string with the value that is mentioned replaced. So you would just signify to it that, listen, I want you to find me this particular character inside of a string, or I want you to find me this particular substring, and I want you to replace the substring with a particular string that I'm going to give you. So essentially, it does take in two uh, parameters, uh, the string that you would like to it to be searched and to be replaced uh, with. The, and uh, no, it does actually, sorry. Uh, it does take in two parameters. It takes uh, the search value, which is the value uh, to search for, and then it takes in the new value that is to be replaced with. So it takes in the value, the search value, and then the value that you need it to be replaced with. So obviously I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna, first of all, we need to declare our string again. So we're going to say channel and then we're going to just say coding, make sure that's a string, coding 101. And so what I want to do is I, I'm going to say channel dot replace. And the first argument, I'm going to mention the character that is to be replaced.
replaced and I want to replace 101 and I want to replace it with the substring 102 or actually let me replace it with 202 so it's much more visible and as you can see on the right side that 101 has been replaced with 102 so the first argument is the search value or the value that is to be replaced and then the 202 uh, or the second argument rather is the value that you would want to replace it with so that is how the replace method can work and in some situation that you can also do replace all because what replace simply does it finds the first instance of that um of that value of that search value so let me say maybe you have two values like this it would not you can see that it only returns the first value but it does not return the second value so in a situation like this you would essentially use replace all so you would just say channel dot replace all so you, and then you would say 101 say 202 and you'll notice that at the very bottom now because we've used replace all then that essentially means that it's going to search for this substring in all of the string so also it's going to find all instances of 101 and it's going to replace it with 202 so in the first method it just finds the first instance of 101 and replaces it and replaces it with 202 but using replace all we can uh, instruct our compiler to find all instances of 101 and replace it with 202. So yeah, so I believe that is about it for today. Those are some of the methods. Uh, there are plenty of string manipulation methods out there. And I'm going to leave uh, a link on the description box so that you can check out some of the popular string manipulation methods that can be really helpful to your programming life. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you very much for watching. Please, please make sure that you have subscribed to this channel and please make sure that you have left a like. If you have not left a like on this video or you, if you have not liked this video, I'm gonna wait for you to like it. Thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, you still have a few more seconds to subscribe. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I will see you next time on Coding 101.